70% less mom pop sellers today in this crazy market because why? They are trapped on those two, three, and 4% rates. It is just getting crazy out there. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another week, another episode of The Brief with your one and only Kenny Simpson. And this week, it's a little bit short week. We're just coming off the Juneteenth. We're getting ready to head into 4th of July. As I look out the window, we're in San Diego. And my gosh, I think I see sun. I saw sun at the beach. So maybe our winter that was the longest winter ever is coming to an end and summer is beginning. But the difference of most years is when we go from right winter, spring, summer, we see what inventory climb, which we're just not seeing. And as I mentioned before, the number is down 70% less mom, pa sellers today than there were pre pandemic. And they were not locked in on these crazy low rates that is really screwing it up. And everybody is blaming the Fed because they did this. They made their rates way too long, way too low. And now we have an inventory squeeze. And speaking of inventory, let's jump into it. Last week, we were at a 2482. This week, can I get a drum roll? 2527, we're going up. Still terrible, absolutely terrible. When I shoot this in July, which is the peak season, if you didn't know, July is the peak number of listings. I will go back and we'll look years over years so I'll have some good data next week. We have 25, 27, 442 new, 490 pending, terrible. Nationally, there's 451,000 homes on the market. To give you a perspective, in 2015, same date, same week, same whatever time, there's 1.173. So as you can see, a lot more and that's probably not even at some all-time high. Inventory is the talk of the residential housing market. My gosh, we got done with the debt market and all I hear about is inventory, inventory, inventory. As we had this long winter here in San Diego and other parts of the country, we are getting this ice age of homes where we just cannot crack, cannot get new homes. But you know who's really, really enjoying this market is if you're a seller, you're enjoying it because you're putting that home on the market, you're getting tons of offers, you get your cake and eat it too. And us buyers, us representing buyers, whether we're doing loans, me or real estate agents, it's tough. So I'm calling those listing agents. What do you want to hear? What is it that you want to see? How can we get the home? We'll close quick. We're writing offers of 15 day closes and minimal contingencies or no contingencies. It's tough out there. Let's be honest. It is brutal. But what's not happening too is investors are 15, 20% of the market that 33% of all transactions in April, they were cashed, purchased. This isn't helping for the person when you are writing an offer, there's probably, especially here in San Diego, there's cash buyers all the time. And where is this money coming from? Guys, people just have money. They sold homes, they sold businesses, they cashed out, they save money, whatever it is, people just have way more money than you think, especially in certain places where we live. Well, one thing that's going on that's a lot of people are not gonna be very happy about, when I say a lot, I'm talking 45 million people are not gonna be happy coming October 1, because I'm sorry, my friends, the era, of not paying your student loans has come to an end. And what does that mean? On the average, if you have a student loan over the last three years, I hope you saved your money, paid down debt, but most of you probably took that money, that 350, which is your average payment, the 400, the 500, the 600, the 700, the 800, the 1,000. Oh, I've seen all the payments. I've been doing loans long enough. But the, your average person over the last three years saved $15,000. What did you do with that money? Did you invest it? Did you buy stuff with it? Did you save it? Did you pay down debt? Whatever you did, Welcome back, it's due. Why? Because the government's 110 plus billion dollars interest they're making off the student loans, they need to start getting that payback and the taxpayers are not interested in helping you out. And on top of student loans, I don't know what's going on with the whole debacle or debate about waiving student loans or not paying for it or whatever it is. That doesn't sound good. So I don't know whose administration came up with forgiving it or not forgiving it. I don't really care, but there's probably gonna be even more upset people because now their loans are due and they thought they were gonna get chopped in half or paid off. So can't make your payment. You should probably reach out to your servicer, try to start negotiating, see what they can do. But according to an article I just read, government is expecting student pay, uh, student loan delinquencies to go up because of this a lot of people are not prepared for this payment. I'm like, when I tell you the average is 350, there's a lot of people paying five, 600 bucks. So when you have not been paying that and you're with all the stuff inflation, that is going to hurt. Also, the home builders are loving life right now. Their margins are at all time high. 
buy. Their, the home starts just came out. They're way up. Builder sentiments way up. Guys, these home builders, I'm not saying everywhere in the country, but if you're here in California, San Diego, you're probably loving this because you are your competition is zero. There is no competition. There's no inventory. So if you're building a home, what are builders do? They're giving mass incentives to buy the home. They're able to buy down your rate, right? They can give you a good rate. They can do the three, two, one, the two, one buy down, whatever it is. They have margins. They can do stuff to win your business. So they don't have much competition. Think about it. In San Diego, we're 20. Let's just round up and be nice. 2,600 listings right now through the whole county, the whole place, all 3 million people. Last year was 5,000. That was terrible. There's no competition. So home builders, you're raking in the dough. You're loving life. They're also not building as crazy and building as much. So that's a, you know, a good sign for the market. But what else is going on out there in the market that's really kind of the talk of town. And really, honestly, it's rates. As we talk to a lot of buyers and people trying to get in and buy a property, they have this level of expectation where I'm going to put this much down and I'm going to have a payment of this and I want to buy a house this. It's not It's not adding up. So if you're a home buyer or you're selling your home, you're going to trade up. Here is the conversation that I literally am having with every single buyer. And I know I'm one LO here in San Diego and there's tons of LOs and they're having the same conversations because I talked to them and realtors that this is what it is. If you are buying a home today, let's just say you wanted a payment of $3,500. But right now, because your down payment and interest rates and everything else, your payment is $4,300. And you're like, this sucks. I get it. So the only option you really have is to keep renting, don't buy, put more money down, buy down the rate, try to get a seller to buy down the rate, which is pretty much impossible. Or you have to understand and you have to be, I don't think it's, I think wise enough or understand what's going on. If interest rates drop, you need to run what your loan would look like on a refi. So what am I doing if I've, you know, VA, conventional, FHA, all that. I have a lot of first time home buyers saying, hey, Kenny, so I'm at six today. What if it goes to five? What if it goes to four and a half for a refi? We're looking at those numbers and does that back down? Hopefully, right? Hopefully, there. I can't make predictions. I'm very confident rates will come down. I don't know where to, but hopefully we will have some rate relief and those rates will come down and you can hit that number where you want to. Because right now, you're most likely gonna have to pay a higher payment, which is not fun because on top of that, food, gas, all that fun stuff, electricity, is higher. So I get it. It's not fun. But here's the alternative. You wait till rates come down. And I tell everybody the $600,000 condo you're looking at when rates come down to where you want them to be, let's say you want to be at five, will probably be closer to 700,000. We run the numbers, the payment's actually the same. You're not winning. The competition, I promise you, will not be the same. If there's 10 offers on a house now, and when that rate comes down, yeah, we might get a little bit more inventory. We're not going to get enough. You're going to see 20 to 30 offers. And so you're going to overpay and the competition is going to come it will come. How do I know this? We just lived through it through COVID and we've seen this through other cycles just right now. We came out of, you know, Q4 of 2022, coming into Q1, rates drop, <sighs> huge demand off the sideline, people coming in, boom, they're feeling good. And why might not you, why not, why are people not buying? They're like, okay, with renting, they're worried about, they're going to have a job, they're worried about a recession, they're worried about inflation, they're worried about high rates, all this. But what's funny is most people literally I talk to are so worried about those high rates. They would rather, I think, we already saw this in COVID. Most people would rather have a lower rate and overpay something than have a higher rate, pay less. I don't know. I don't know. People don't look at the numbers. I don't think people understand. Rates go low. I would rather be refining out than buying and dealing with the competition. But that's up to you. I don't know what to tell you guys, but what I will tell you is that inventory is not going to get better anytime soon. And it's crazy. One last thing I want to share with you guys. This is really important, which is not being talked about enough. As I mentioned before, a lot of my things is the 10 year treasury look at, which is right around 3.7. Remember the 10 Typical prior to COVID and rates low, the typical spread was about 1.8. So you take 3.7 plus 1.8, right? Let's just round up to two because I can do my math. Ah, just say 1.8. You're looking at an interest rate of 5.5, but you and I know that any of the conventional rate is not 5.5. It's over six. That spread of 1.8 was at 2.7, but that spread today because of the banking debacle, all the craziness going on has now reached a new high of 3.2. So lovely, lovely, lovely. We are passing that on to you. Yes. So that is going to have to come down. So there is a lot of spread just in the rate now, 10 years high. That's why I think when we do refi, my prediction is government, you know, VA, FHA rates. I would not be surprised if you saw a three handle, a high 3.5. 
three number and maybe low flow fours or conventional in the mid fours to upper fours. I don't think that's going to be unrealistic because when that spread comes down, that will change things. And what is going to make the spread go down? Interest rates coming down. Because every servicer that's servicing your loan that needs three to five years to make money, they realize that what they're, the servicing business they're buying right now, they know that you're most likely 95% of you probably are not more when the rates drop in the next 12 to 24 months, whatever it is, it could be faster. That's the prediction. You're going to refi. They need to make money. That's why they're giving you that margin. They're not in the business of losing money, nor your I. So they're passing that on to you. When that 10 year comes down and interest rates come down at some lower level, that spread will come down. It will all even out. I think we're going to land in, like I said, rates where I just mentioned. So if you're locking in at 6%, you should be running five, four and a half on conventional. You know, if you're locking in a six on a government, you should be running five, four and a half, maybe four percent. Not saying you're going to get there, but it's good to know your numbers because you might buy a property and you might go to less and then rates come down. You might go, son of a gun. I don't even want this property. I should have bought that other one because the rates end up getting there. no promises, no promises, but just keep watching the data. And we do know inflation is coming down. People, consumers slowing. Things are slowing down. Rates should trend with that. With that being said, I appreciate you watching week over week. Thanks for the feedback. I can help you with anything. Please reach out. Have a great week. Until next week, not much economic data this week, the jobless claims, things like that. But as we progress over the next you know, third 60, 90 days, we're going to be watching a lot. Are the feds going to stay? Are they going to hike? Inflation going to keep coming down. What's going to happen here? So it'll be very, very interesting to see what's going on out there. But I can tell you when I go to the store and I shop for food, it's way too expensive. It's still crazy going out to restaurants, but we're all spending our money on experiences and things like that. And so will this be the big last big summer boom travel and things will start slowing down? We will find out. But until next week, have a great week. Talk to you guys soon.